four, three, two, one. Hey, Shackheads, it's Curtis Tucker here with another episode of the Shaggy Life Podcast. Just want to say hi, pop in here. Uh, this may be a quick episode. I always think that, and then they go longer than what I thought they were. I don't have hardly anything typed up or written on this one, so uh, unless I ad-lib a whole bunch, it should be a fairly quick episode, but I just wanted to throw this one out here because uh, if I'm going to do this episode, I've got to do it now, and as you probably read by the title, it is 22 Ways to Get into the Halloween Mood or Spirit or kind of get that uh, that Halloween feeling, and so I'm going to Uh, give you guys my list of 22 different ways but uh, just to talk about Halloween really quick I've kind of got the hopefully if you're watching this um, hello I'm waving at you Uh, you guys are watching on YouTube or Facebook and I've got it a little bit uh, creepy spooky kind of orangey in here and kind of trying to give it that Halloween feel for tonight's podcast since it is Halloween related but uh, if you guys are uh, not watching me, you can go to youtube.com slash at Curtis Tucker. And if you guys are watching me, but uh, you think you're going to want to listen to one of the podcast episodes and you're not going to be able to watch me, you can catch me on almost all of the major podcasting platforms. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, subscribe to the YouTube channel. That really helps me out, builds my audience. And then you guys get notified when I upload new stuff. Just want to throw this out there real quick. This is not on my list, but it is Thursday night, uh, October 10th, when I am recording this. And I just, so an alert went out that um, the Northern Lights were going to be uh, coming pretty far south tonight and possibly tomorrow night. So uh, around nine, a uh, little after nine, I zipped out of town. Uh, the cool thing about living in Oklahoma and Enid is you can you can get out of town pretty quick and about a mile out of town it gets really dark and and you get away from the city lights so I zipped out there real quick and um, I parked on a dirt road and um, people had said that the northern lights were going off and so I stood there on the dirt road and I looked and it was just dark and I couldn't see anything and I held up my phone and wow, the phone, it's so weird how your eyes just see black and the phone, as soon as I pointed it up in the sky, there was red and green and these just streaks of red in the sky. And so I set my camera to a three second um, shutter so it stayed open and it took some really great uh, pictures. But then what I noticed was if I turned my phone off, and just stood there for a few minutes and let my eyes adjust to the darkness when the really red reds would would come by when when I say come by it's kind of like they're it's kind of like it's moving it's not like just one you know one look it's it's changing the whole time that you're looking and so but when the when the really bright reds rays would come I could actually see the reds with my eyes without my iPhone which was really cool so I can mark that off my bucket list. I have actually seen the Northern Lights, uh, which was pretty cool. So if you go to um, my Curtis Tucker Facebook page, uh, the Northern Light photos are on there. And then I'll try to somehow uh, get them on the website, curtistucker.com as well. Maybe I'll do an episode on some of my photographs or weird weather things or I don't know, something like that. But uh, anyway, the reason I bring that up is because that was kind of a cool way of getting into the spooky Halloween spirit was going out of town onto a dirt road. Uh, You're not going to have the northern lights everywhere and even here you're not going to have them very often. So I would say just maybe get out of town and go look at the stars and if you sit there long enough, uh, you're probably almost always going to see a shooting star at some point, and, or you're going to see the satellites. But just being out there in the dark and looking up in the sky and not knowing, you know, the things going on around you, it kind of could give you that spooky feeling. So I'm going to throw that one in as a bonus way of getting into the Halloween mood. But here is my list, my list. And so. Uh, you guys can change these to make it your list 
or um, you know modify them or whatever. But these are kind of the things that help me. Now all of these I don't use. Some of them I do, but these things get me in the mood for Halloween. And why does that even matter? Uh, it matters because Halloween has quickly become. Uh, I believe the second most popular holiday and it is closing on on Christmas very quick, especially in the amount of uh, money that people are spending. And so Halloween used to be just kind of a one night deal. Uh, there would be a few people that would throw up some decorations in their yard, you know, way back in the day. And then as it slowly progressed now, people uh, start setting up Halloween sometimes in September and they do elaborate yard decorations and they decorate their house and and they have multiple parties and uh, just all kind of, you know Halloween has gotten really 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 big and then with all of the horror movies and and everything and these ho these scary, um, series uh, streaming services have and everything it's uh, become quite a big deal so um, I don't want you to miss out on Halloween I think um, it can be as and, it, and for anybody I know there's people out there that for some reason or another are against Halloween because you think it's some type of evil thing I I just can't uh, you're you know, you're probably not going to like this episode. Uh, maybe you probably shouldn't even be listening. Um, so uh, this is really about um, Halloween. So if you don't like Halloween, probably should turn it off. Okay, so if you do like Halloween, but you're not in quite in the mood and you're wondering, why aren't I in the mood for Halloween? Well, it's probably because you haven't done these 22 things. Okay, number one for me... Uh, the thing that always kicks off Halloween is to watch a scary Halloween movie. And there can be no other better Halloween movie than Halloween. And I'm talking about the original 1978 Halloween. Now, the cool thing about it is it's, it is a great, scary Halloween movie that is just not filled with super violence and um, lots of blood. Uh, I, I think there's literally no blood <clears throat> in the movie. Um, it's just more suspenseful, uh, you know, wondering what's coming around the corner. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, and then, you know, then it went on and they made like 15,000 uh, different versions of it. Uh, or sequels, but uh, there's not one. None of them are as good as the original. So uh, I always have to watch um, the original Halloween, and that gets me into it immediately gets me into the Halloween spirit. Uh, if not the movie, just the music from the movie. But I believe I've probably, and I haven't watched the entire two hours five times, but I believe. I have flipped it over to that movie on television five times this Halloween already, and it is uh, just October 10th. So one of those channels uh, is showing uh, scary movies all month long, and they're just some every now and then they just show Halloween over and over again, and they'll show different sequels of Halloween, and then they get back to the original again. So anyway, that is always a must for me is to watch the movie Halloween. Another thing uh, is candy corn. Uh, it's probably not going to be Halloween without buying a bag of candy corn, putting it in a bowl, and eating the whole darn thing. So what I did find this year, uh, I bought my uh, candy corn way back in September. Uh, it was gone long time ago. But uh, I bought Jelly Belly candy corn, which was a little different than like uh, Brock's and some of the other, some of the cheaper versions. Uh, some of the cheaper versions are really, really waxy and um, just kind of blah, but I still like them. But the, for some reason, I, I felt like the Jelly Belly candy corn was a little crisper, a little sweeter, just a little, just better. Uh, I think they, they seem to me to be a little smaller, the actual size of the candy corn. Um, but, and they, and they, they had this hint, and I don't know how to describe it, but they did have this hint 
of a Jelly Belly flavor. And I don't know what that means, but I just know that eating them, I could kind of tell they were a Jelly Belly candy corn. So uh, gotta have a bag of uh, candy corn. Number three, put a pumpkin on your porch. And that's not just a pumpkin, but you need to either carve the pumpkin or you need to uh, paint or draw on the pumpkin. Now we've done both. We've, uh, when the kids were little, of course the big thing was to carve pumpkins. And you know that's digging it out and getting the knife and then putting the candle in it. And, and those are pretty cool, but they do t tend to kind of, uh, get mold and kind of fall apart uh, really quick. And so a couple of years, we actually just uh, used magic marker and drew faces on the pumpkins. Now doing that, they last a lot longer. They're not quite as scary, but um, then you can like flip them around and use them as uh, Thanksgiving pumpkins because uh, they're going to last a while. But uh, you've got to have pumpkins on your porch uh, to get you in the Halloween spirit. Number four, uh, burn a candle with a pumpkin spice scent. And so, yeah, that uh, will definitely get uh, just about anyone. And of course, pumpkin spice is gonna be one of the most popular, uh, but any type of a fall scent will kind of get you in the mood for Halloween. And, uh, you know, in the evenings, light the candle, turn your lights down, while you're watching TV and it'll kind of set that mood for you. Uh, don't go uh, straight into the Halloween or the uh, Christmas or holiday scents. Uh, keep them, keep everything uh, fall and Halloween. So uh, check that out. They've got all kinds of different scents. Um, the next one, I don't have these actually numbered on my sheet, so I'm not sure. I think that one, two, three, four, five. Number five, take a long walk on a dark street with trees and sidewalks. So um, kind of gives you that uh, memory of uh, if you guys went trick-or-treating as kids, uh, where we trick-or-treated, uh, we had really cool wide fun streets and on each side of the street there was a sidewalk and there was trees basically between the street and the sidewalk and bungalows and two-story houses and so just taking a walk down either the street you grew up on where you trick-or-treated or a street similar to the street that you grew up on that will get you in the Halloween mood uh, make sure it is at night and uh, just walk slow you're gonna hear dogs barking and uh, you know, eventually here pretty soon, you'll hear the crackling of the leaves. But um, as you're walking down the sidewalk, you can just almost envision those days when there was just, just hundreds, literally hundreds of kids running down the sidewalk, going from house to house, um, getting candy back, especially back in the 70s. Um, they don't do it as much now. Uh, I know there's a lot more trunk or treats and a lot more churches have events. And so it just seems like there are fewer kids, uh, but I could be wrong. I, there have been a few Halloweens I've been out in the last couple of years where there have been a lot of kids, but I live in a neighborhood where they give out a lot of candy. And so we are usually one of the neighborhoods that are hit uh, pretty hard. Uh, the next one, uh, wad up and eat a few wrapples uh, without the apple. And so wrapples are from way back in the day and they are just a, a round, like kind of a tortilla looking piece of caramel, caramel and you wrap them around an apple and then you uh, and then you kind of close it on the end so it kind of surrounds the apple and you don't have to bake it or anything. You can just literally just eat it. But um, as kids, we would always kind of roll them up and just eat the wrapple without the apple. And so that is kind of a cool, fun way that uh, caramel flavor kind of gets you in the mood for Halloween. So uh, get you, and they do still sell them. I'm sure uh, some of the grocery stores in your hometown should sell them. And if you can't find them, get online and uh, you can find them online, but order some wrapples that will get you in the mood for Halloween. Next one, listen to a spooky music playlist in your parked car at night. And so that's kind of a dual thing. Uh, so make a playlist of uh, songs like Thriller, Monster Mash, 
the theme from Halloween, the theme from Stranger Things. Um, I did not, I guess I should have come up with a playlist for you guys, but you guys can, there, you know, just Google it. There are tons of playlists out there. Um, Werewolves of London, uh, just all kinds of fun uh, songs and the cool thing. So you can play that playlist around the house. So if you're like cleaning or just hanging out on the computer, not really watching TV, play that playlist while you're burning candles with the pumpkin spice scent. You got your lights lowered. You're going to really get into that pumpkin Halloween fall feeling. So, but the the cool thing would be to go out like like I did tonight, uh, go out and sit, uh, maybe sit on the hood of your car and watch the stars and play that playlist of spooky songs while you're out looking at the aurora borealis, or if you're just looking for shooting stars. So, uh, kind of makes it a little creepy, especially in Oklahoma while you're out there on uh, out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, next one, watch Hocus Pocus in a dark room with only candles burning. And again, kind of set the mood, maybe make some popcorn, maybe make some popcorn balls. You know, they actually used to give out popcorn balls uh, on Halloween back in the 70s, and we used to eat them. But um, for me, Hocus Pocus is just one of those great um, Halloween get in the Halloween mood movies. It's not scary. It's uh, fun. It, well, it's got, you know, for a kid, it might be, there might be some uh, parts in it where the witches might scare them, but it's just a fun family movie, but really gets you in the mood um, for Halloween. Really well done, really well acted, um, great actors, and also has some good fun music. So watch Hocus Pocus. That's kind of an annual deal that I have to do. Uh, listen to a scary podcast with headphones on. And again, there are a lot of podcasts out there, some of them talking about murder, some of them talking about ghost stories, some talking about unexplained, some talking about monsters. So you can find a million different podcasts out there. What would be fun is to get you a big comfy chair, burn your uh, pumpkin spice candle, lower the lights, and uh, sit there in the dark, almost dark, and listen to some scary podcasts. It'd be fun to have somebody with you and uh, even have a group of people sitting around, especially finding a podcast that's got some scary ghost story um, things. And you could even do that um, out, you know, take your car out and listen to ghost stories while you're out looking at the stars. So... Uh, you can combine a lot of these uh, and make it fun. The next one, binge watch old episodes of Ghost Hunters. And so uh, one of my favorite shows, used to love Ghost Hunters. Now it wasn't, you know, a show that was trying to scare you or make you believe that there was um, occult stuff or anything. It was just trying to explain that, you know, some houses there's just creaky noises and they can explain what was causing them. Other houses, they could not explain what was causing the noises. And so they just left it up to you that uh, there could actually be some type of a ghost or, and when I say ghost, um, what we're really talking about is like energy, like somebody may have died there, they're gone, but their energy, which is what we would consider a ghost, their energy is there and that energy causes things to happen. And as we know, everything is energy and energy can never go away. It just changes from one thing to another, but it it's always there. So um, anyway, I always thought Ghost Hunters was well done. You may have to get on YouTube uh, to find some old episodes. I don't even think they're doing the reruns on TV anymore. But one of my favorite things ever was on Halloween night was to uh, pass out candy for most of the night to the neighborhood kids. And then uh, ghost hunters would go live for like six hours at some abandoned penitentiary or hospital or some old hotel. And so I'd be able to come in and catch like the last three hours of them being live. Um, and they don't do that anymore. I wish they would. Um, that was... Uh, super fun. So, um, and that was usually, but that was actually on Halloween night. Uh, the next one, decorate your house with orange lights, spider webs, and skeletons. And so, 
Um, yeah, either inside, outside, on the porch. Uh, if you can set up some lights in the yard, put some uh, ghost scary stuff out in the yard, build little uh, little cemetery out of your leaves. But just have some Halloween decorations. Put some pumpkin uh, decorations around in your house. Uh, just get all decorated for Halloween. That will get you in the mood for Halloween. Um, uh, part of that I just said is build a cemetery in your front yard. If you guys don't have any leaves, that's going to make it a little harder. But if you guys do have some big trees with lots of leaves, just rake those leaves into piles and put a little cardboard um, headstone there uh, or actually kind of a big rock at the head of some of those and you can make it look like a, a cemetery. So that'll get you in the Halloween mood. Next one, read a book of ghost stories with only a lamp on. So that would basically be just get the house all dark, burn some candles, uh, get your one light over your book and uh, read. Uh, could be ghost stories, could be a scary book, could be a Stephen King book, um, just something like that. But that will get you in the mood for Halloween. Uh, next one, create a ghoulish costume for Halloween night. So whether you're going to go uh, to a Halloween party or not, uh, it's always fun if you're going to be handing out Halloween candy to actually have a costume on as you hand out the candy. And so that will get you in the mood is to go. And uh, I would always suggest making your own costume uh, you're going to save some money and you're going to get that those creative juices flowing. But uh, look around the house, look in the garage. You may have to go buy some parts here and there. But uh, throw together some type of spooky, it could just be a sheet, uh, a ghost, to look like a ghost. But uh, do something, get you a costume ready for Halloween. That'll get you in the mood. Uh, next one, watch. Uh, this one should have been high, uh, and these are in no particular order, but uh, watch the Charlie Brown Halloween special. Now, I know this has gotten, in one sense, it's gotten harder to do. In another sense, it's gotten easier to do. So um, if you don't have Apple Plus, it's gotten harder to do. So uh, the Charlie Brown specials are no longer on rel regular television once a year like they used to be, but they are permanently on Apple Plus, so you can basically get on there and watch them anytime you want. But again, you have to have a subscription, and if you don't, you're not gonna be able to watch it. So um, I don't think it's as fun being able to get onto a streaming service and watch the Charlie Brown special anytime I want. It just doesn't make it magical. Uh, so um, I don't know, I've actually got it DVR'd uh, I must have DVR'd it from television before it went away. And so, um, you know, I would probably just pick out one night. Um, I don't know. It just, it's, they've just kind of killed uh, that, that cool, hey, it's Charlie Brown night. We've got to stay home and watch Charlie Brown now. You can't do that, and you don't have to do that if you just want to stream it. But anyway, um, do not... Uh, get to Halloween night without having watched uh, It's a Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. Next one, buy a bag of those red and black wrapped peanut butter kisses. So if you remember when you're a kid, uh, you, you know, you have your bag full of Snickers and Crunches and, uh, you know, King Size Baby Ruth and Tootsie Rolls and Bubblegum. And, and then at the very bottom, there's these just black and orange wrapped kind of taffy square looking candy and you always I, we always uh, save those till we didn't save them we just didn't want to eat them and uh, so they would be all that was left once we ate all the other candy but the funny thing was once you started eating them uh, you found out they actually weren't that bad but uh, it's a great reminder uh, it also kind of throws a twist in for the kids that are all expecting, you know, like I say, Hershey bars and uh, Kit Kats and stuff like that. It's always fun to give them some of that old fashioned uh, black and orange candy. So fine. And they're called peanut butter kisses if you didn't know. Uh, you can find them all over the place. So get those. Uh, the next one, um, now you could make some exotic alcoholic drinks. Um, I don't know that they would really get me in the mood 
for Halloween because there's not like a specific drink that I've been drinking for years and years and years, like, you know, the vampire martini or something. So, so I don't really have a alcoholic drink, but I would think that drinking some apple cider, especially some warmed up apple cider, that kind of gets you in the fall mood. And if you're in the fall mood, you're going to be in the Halloween mood. So get you some apple cider that will get you going. Uh, next one, shop at a store with lots of Halloween items and costumes. And so that that's definitely going to get you in the Halloween mode. Go to uh, Spirit Halloween or Hobby Lobby or just, you know, any store. And you don't have to buy anything. Um, it's just going to get you in the mood for Halloween, just going in and seeing all the decorations, seeing uh, some of the new stuff that they have out. Now they have like animatronic uh, decorations that you can buy for your yard and uh, all kinds of fun lights. And, and then the costumes. Uh, check out some of the costumes. You may find like a wig or a set of teeth or something that can go with a costume that you might have at home. So uh, get in the mood by preparing... Uh, by going to one of the stores. Next one, take pictures at a local pumpkin patch. Now, in this day and age, most towns have at least some type of a pumpkin patch. Uh, Enid has a couple of big ones, but, um, and, and it doesn't have to, you don't have to take pictures of like people or you or selfies or anything. Just take pictures of the pumpkins. Some of the best pictures for Halloween are um, you know pumpkins that are all stacked and so just get some really cool fun photographs of fall leaves and pumpkins uh, you can catch all that stuff they'll usually have um, hay bales and things like that so uh, go to the local pumpkin patch and get you some uh, photographs that'll kind of get you in the mood next one visit a local haunted house uh, pretty much I would think almost every town's going to have a haunted house now a lot of them uh, they try to be super, super scary. So if you don't like super, super scary, um, you're not going to like going through there. But uh, there also are haunted mazes, which aren't, with which don't have any people jumping out at you in them. Uh, so find something like that, something that's kind of a haunted attraction. Uh, maybe there's a ghost tour. Uh, I know our our. Enid has a ghost tour that, that goes on. And so you're going to be able to find something. Haunted house, ghost tour, something like that. But do that. That will definitely get you in the Halloween spirit. And the last one on my list, and I'm going to have to whisper, is uh, tell Alexa, A-L-E-X-A, -E that um, you want her to play scary sounds uh, as background noise. And so if you're reading a book or you're working on the computer and you've got your lights down low and you've got your candles burning and you've got your cup of apple cider, uh, just have her play some scary, you know, howling and owls hooting and stuff like that, lightning going off in the background. Have her play some background music and um, kind of give you that fun, creepy, creepy feeling for Halloween. So there is my list of 22 ways to get into the Halloween spirit or the Halloween mood, whichever way you want to go. Um, enjoy Halloween. Enjoy the season. Uh, it's always fun. Uh, if you follow Todd and I on our 70s Buzz podcast or the Buzzhead Radio podcast, we are going to try to find somewhere fun to broadcast from on the Tuesday before Halloween. Halloween's on a Thursday this year and so uh, that podcast episode should get you into the hollow halloween mood if you're not there yet we will let you know we have not found a spot yet but uh, we are looking so hit me up at curtis at curtis tucker.com or shags at shaggy duck.com i would love to hear from you and don't forget to subscribe to the podcast don't forget to subscribe to the youtube channel and uh, that helps me uh, increase all the stuff that I've got going on. If you guys have any questions, if you guys have show ideas, again, I'm always looking for, uh, you know, what you got. What do you guys want to hear from me? What do you want to know what I've been up to? Um, so I do have some fun stuff possibly coming up. And uh, as things transpire, I will let you guys know. Um, other than that, uh, just kind of 
trucking along, waiting for uh, Halloween to get here. We'll be going to the OU Texas game this weekend, so we do have some football going on. But I greatly appreciate you guys. I'm waving at you on the YouTube channel. You guys have a great weekend, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.